you today. I'm so glad to be able to have this time with you. I'm Pastor Mario Sandoval here at Maranatha Church in Waco, the Bellmead area of Waco, and I'm glad. I'm glad for this moment. It is a joy for me every single time that we can just dive into God's Word, that we can encourage one another in God's Word. You know, I believe that uh, if we will put God first and seek him truly with the correct heart, uh, there is no end to what he can do in our lives. And so I encourage you today in the faith. I encourage you in your walk with God. I pray and believe that today 
that um, God will sow a seed in your heart, a seed of his word, that his word as a seed will be sown into your heart and that it is going to bear fruit for you. God bless you. Well, I want to welcome everybody that's, that is, uh, you know, connected. I want to invite you to give us a like, give us a comment. Uh, don't forget to share the video. I pray that uh, you be encouraged and so that and share it so that other people can be blessed as well. You know, this is the program Man to Man with God, and it's devoted. Is the, I'm devoting it to to deal with man topics, male topics, things that have to do with us guys. And I know there's some ladies that get connected sometimes, and you are always welcome, ladies. You are welcome always at all times to come on here to man to man with God so that you can learn about your man, the men in your life, your husband, your father, your uncles, your children, your sons, your grandsons, your nephews, whatever, all those men that are dear to your life. It's good to be on here. And I believe that God is going to just continue to just give us, uh, he's going to speak to us. The Bible says, seek and you shall find. And we're seeking and we're seeking God as men. And we're saying, God, we want to be those men that you want us to be. We want to understand the correct teachings concerning manhood. We want to have the right definition concerning manhood. And we want to uh, be, uh, we want to have healthy manhood in our lives uh, to be part of, of, you know, this life uh, uh, it, that you've given us. And so uh, it's going to be a blessing. Well, I'm, in, I'm excited about today's topic. It's, uh, you know, I, I'm always praying and most of the time, Almost all the time, I'm already, I already have what I want to share uh, with you. But uh, this time, I was like, Lord, what, the, what am I going to share? You know, I've been preaching over, I've been preaching for many years, and so over time, you know, you kind of like build this library of sermons and teachings and notes, and so sometimes it's easy to just grab an old message and. Uh, and teach it. And sometimes the Lord will. The Lord will take us back to something we taught and he'll make it fresh and, and we'll teach it. But uh, I've always uh, sought the Lord. Uh, even Let's say I just gave up. Let's say today I gave this teaching and tomorrow I get invited to speak to men. I'm going to pray. And I might tell the Lord, Lord, in my prayer, you know that, that, that subject that I taught you, I think it's pretty good. But Lord, you're the one who knows. And so I've always sought the Lord. So like I was saying, I, I just didn't have the word. I was like, what am I going to share? What am I going to share? Of course, I got stuff, but I was like, Lord, I, I want to hear from you. And as I was as I was just praying about that today, and, and today I even got to a point like, hey, Lord, you know, you know, need to need to hurry up here. You know, we need to find out what it is you're going to share, Lord. Uh, amen. It's not the first time I've been there. God's been faithful. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I'm going to say it like this. In my heart, I heard these words spoken. And it's called, Yes, Sir. And that's the title of today's teaching, Yes, Sir. Uh, when I heard those words, I mean, they were spoken in my heart. Not audible, not to hear them audible, but I heard them. I heard them in my spirit. I heard them with my, my, my spiritual ears. And I heard, and they were spoken with a, with a sternness with a strength there was a there was a masculinity spoken to them and it said yes sir and it came to like when um i guess soldiers uh uh you know salute their higher ranking officers and they say yes sir or or, or when I, I came to me like when a young person is in the presence of a grandparent or, or you know you know, personal authority, a male figure that's in their life that they look up to and they say something to them, hey, hey boy, or they call him by, hey, yes sir, yes sir, uh, that came to me. And uh, and so I want to read to you, and so when I was thinking about that, what came to me is this, who is the person or persons uh, you say to, you say yes sir to, or yes ma'am? That, that, that's, that's valid as well here. Who are the people in your life uh, that you say yes sir to or you say yes ma'am to? Well, let me put it to you this way. Who are the people in your life that you should be saying yes sir to, uh, yes ma'am to at the level of, of respect maybe, just out of respect? Uh, we have all seen how over generations that respect 
uh, towards uh, elderly people that respect or people that are um, elderly or even uh, older than me that it's not like it used to be. <laughs> uh, it's, it's different now. And, uh, and it's just like, you know, we're at the same level and we're not. You're not at the same level, everybody. I'm not at the same level, everybody. There are people in my life that when they step into the room, it's not like, I don't look at them like this. I'm looking at them like this. And they could be physically even shorter than me, but there's a yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. And so that's very important in life. Very important life. And so I'm asking the men today, who are the men in your life? Who are the men in your life that you say yes sir to? It's very important that you that you that you calculate who they are, that you identify those people. I want to read to you a scripture, just one quick quick scripture. In Matthew, <coughs> excuse me, in Matthew chapter 8, verse 9, these words are not Jesus' words, but they are the words of a man. And he's speaking to Jesus and this, and he's talking to Jesus. And this is a statement that he made to Jesus uh, in Matthew chapter eight, verse nine. It says, for I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. The story here is about a, a, a a military man, a man of authority, a ranking military, a centurion in the Roman army. And uh, he sought out Jesus. He, he investigated and he found out where Jesus was at and he went to go speak to Jesus. And he made it a point, he determined himself that he was going to ask Jesus for something. And what he asked Jesus was for a, a miracle, a physical healing, a, a supernatural healing in his servants. And his servant, he had a servant that was very ill, critical. And so he went out to Jesus and he asked Jesus, would you heal my servant? And Jesus responded, yes, I will. Let's go to him. Take me to him. Let's go to where he's at. And, G and he responds, no, Lord, you're, I, I, I'm not worthy that you come into my house. I'm not worthy that you, <laughs> that you be in my house. But just if you just speak the word, just say it. And my servant will heal. Of course, Jesus was amazed with this man's faith. He said, I never saw, I've never seen faith like this in all of Israel. This man is not even of the of the of the religious family of the Israelites. He's a he's a pagan man, he's a Roman. But Jesus says that. He applauds him. He he acknowledges this the faith of the man, says, I have not seen such faith as yours in all of Israel. And uh and it's amazing. Because he, he understood what authority was. He knew that Jesus was not just anybody. And he knew that Jesus had an authority to do miracles. And, and I'm talking about this because uh, it's very important that every male child, every, every male human being that is birthed into this world, it is important that every one of us grow in authority in authority because God gives authority and the reason I say this is because every male human being females too I'm not, I'm not I'm not you know I'm not I'm you know I'm a I'm 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 a, I'm one of those guys that are cheer I'm a cheerleader for the ladies believe me I am I I always encourage my daughters my wife my spiritual daughters, my congregation, the ladies, go be, do some great, go do great things for, for Jesus. Go do great things. Don't do nothing small. We believe in you. God is with you. But with the male child, I want to say every male child is destined to be a leader in life because, you know, there comes a moment where you fall in love, you get married you have children, and now you have a family. And it is the man of the house that is the leader of that household. The husband of the wife is the leader. He's not the better one. He's just the leader. Because two heads is a monster. you got to have a leader. Everywhere you go, there's a leader. There's a leader at your job site. There's a leader in your family. There's a leader uh, on the 
if you play sports, there's a leader. There's always a leader. And and so even in, in the family, there is a leader. And that leader in a normal, natural family, the way God designed, is the man of the house. And so that's why it's very important that we as men grow in true authority. Now, authority, true authority is not, it's, the power of true authority is not there to control. True authority governs. It doesn't control. And the greatest example we have of this is God himself. God has the power to control everything, but God doesn't control. God is not controlling. God governs. He governs the universe. He doesn't control it. He governs it. He doesn't control you. He governs us. And how does he govern us? He governs over us through laws and ordinances. And when he uh, he he speaks of the of the of the laws and the consequences of the law, that's not a threat. That's a warning. He's not saying if you go do this, I'm gonna come at and, and I'm gonna come after you and pay you. No, no. It's God is when the woman remember that that woman that was caught in adultery, and they brought her to Jesus to stone her that she would die. And the Bible says that at the end of it all, Jesus didn't condemn her. The people left. He said, the first one of y'all that are without sin, cast the first stone. All the people left because nobody was was uh, uh, guilt-free or sin-free, only Jesus. And then at the end of it all, he said, woman, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. When he told her, go and sin no more, he wasn't threatening her. He wasn't like threatening Go and sin no more because if you sin again, uh, this go No, he was warning her because sin has consequences. It always does every time. Whether you're a saint, whether you're not a saint, whether you believe in God or don't believe in God, sin has consequences. And so uh, God is a governing God. And we as men need to learn to govern. We need to be good governors, good stewards, good leaders over our family, over our loved ones. And the way you learn authority, the way you grow in authority the way you develop an authority is being under authority. This man said, he goes, I am Jesus. He's acknowledging Jesus' authority to do miracles. He said, all I need you to do is just speak the word. Uh, I, I use an analogy to, um, to explain authority when I've taught at times. And for example, I'll be teaching, for example, what authority is like. And then uh, I'm there and usually in all of our formal gatherings there's probably an usher here an usher there the people that are there just there to serve whatever is needed in the service in the gathering and so I, sometimes I'll I'll, I'll I'll speak out to one and say hey so and so I need you to come over here please and they'll come and, and can you pick up this chair and can you put it over there and they'll do it and then I'll say who moved the chair and let's say his name is Andres Andrew uh, and they'll say um, and m most times people say uh, Andrew, and I'll say, no, Andrew didn't move the chair. I moved the chair because I'm the one that told him to do the chair. I moved the chair with my authority, not with my muscles, with my authority. Because I'm an authority over Andrew in this service, and so when I commanded him to do something, he did it, and that's how authority works. It's, it, that's why this man, this man said, just speak the word. And the Bible says that his, his servant was healed. And so it's very important that we understand this because every one of us men, have authority. We're going to have authority over our children. We're going to have authority over our wives. We're going to have authority over our family. We're going to have authority over the business. We're, we're people of authority. And so the way you grow in authority is that you have to be under authority. You got to be under authority because it's when we're under authority that we grow in authority. And so to do that, you need to acknowledge the people in your life that are an authority that God has placed them in your life, whether it's your, your parents, whether it's your coach, whether it's your, your, your boss, whether it's your spiritual leader, maybe your pastor, maybe, maybe your, uh, your husband, maybe your mom. I don't know. Uh, who is that? Yes. That person that you need to say yes, sir. And yes, ma'am to very important. Did you know the Bible says that when an elderly person walks in the room, you should stand, arise and stand before them. God is teaching us to be respectful, you know. Uh, if I'm ever in a room and there is no chairs and a person of older age walks in, 
I'm going to give up my chair to give them their place, you know? And a lot of times we don't realize those people. We want to treat them like however, and you cannot do that. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, honor your father and your mother so that it will go well with you on the earth and you have long life. We got this. Not, it's, not, it's not a small thing. And so we need to acknowledge who is the yes, sir, that I, who is the person that I'm going to say that, that it's worthy of me to say yes, sir, yes, ma'am. Uh, I have a spiritual daughter. Uh, I have several, and uh, there's one of them. That's how she. That, that's how she always responded to me. Yes, sir. Uh, no, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's always like that, you know. And uh, uh, we need to have those people in my life, in our lives. And uh, and the reason it's important. Now, how do you grow in authority? Uh, being under authority. But I want to explain something to you that our our growth in authority. It's not something that we pursue as in the kingdom of God as those who are out of the kingdom of God. The world has another way. They, they, they work, they push, they, 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 they do whatever they got to do to grow. We don't. We don't promote ourselves. God promotes us. And how? Through faithfulness. You know what faithfulness means? Being responsible. Everything that God commands you to do, whether he does it directly or he does it through an authority, a person of authority in your life, you should take that seriously. You should never belittle that. Whether it's to go just, hey, will you bring me this? You know, you need to realize that's what God is observing. That's what God is watching. You know, David, uh, and I'm sorry, Paul, the apostle said these words in the Bible. And, the, and he said, he said, God determined me faithful by placing me in the ministry. He didn't say, I determined myself faithful. No, God saw me as faithful. And the Bible teaches that. We don't, we don't, we don't put ourselves in a higher authority. No, authority is not something you, you, grab, you, take, you take. Authority is something that is given to you. And the great example that we have of this is Jesus Christ himself. Jesus gave his disciples this command when he commanded them the Great Commission. He said these words to him. He goes, he says, he says uh, uh, all authority... Uh, some versions say all power, but it's all authority. All authority has been given to me in heaven, on, heaven and on earth. But notice what he says. It's been given to me. Jesus didn't, just because he was the son of God, just imposed and just took his authority. No, he, he said it was given to me. Jesus waited for the moment to receive all authority in heaven, in heaven and in earth. And so... Uh, we too need to learn to be faithful. And so I want to encourage you today that you will be faithful. And what is faithfulness? What God is watching, what God is observing is the places, the, 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 respon the places of responsibility that's been given to you by a higher authority. The things the responsibility that's been given unto you from a higher authority. Some of them are temporary. Can you run to the store and do this for me? Can you do this for me? Some of them are long-term. I want to entrust you with something. And so I want to encourage all the men today to evaluate your life because sometimes we get away from those principles and all we do is just focus on our ambitions. You know, one of the things that the Bible says about Joseph, if you know about Joseph, he was in prison. He had a great calling of God, but he was in prison. He had been accused falsely uh, for uh, for rape, and it wasn't true. Uh, he had been uh, sold as a prisoner, uh, I mean, as a, as a slave. And uh, But there, they, the Bible makes a comment about Joseph while he's in prison. He's, he's a slave and a pr imprisonment as a slave. It says, in everything that was supposed to be done, Joseph did. One of the things that that, that, that that I see about Joseph's life that sticks out is that he was faithful. And faithfulness is not about your activity. It's about your responsibility. When authorities, even if it's your grandma, uh, can you go do this? Yes, ma'am. And I'm telling you, if you will take into consideration and begin to make sure that those areas of your life the yes sir area, the yes ma'am area, that those areas in your life, you're being faithful, you're being responsible, that 
that you do it. Maybe you're young today and your mom is giving you a chore. Your mom is giving you a chore at the house. You have a certain responsibility. Your job is to take out the trash, make sure the trash. Well, I want to tell you that you need to really be responsible with that because you know what? Those are the areas that God is watching you at. On your job, maybe you're the lead person, the, the boss man, the, 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 uh, the main supervisor uh, has entrusted you with a project and uh, he's letting you do it. He's entrusted you with a vehicle. He's giving you certain benefits. Don't, don't abuse those. Be responsible. Be faithful. That's what that means. Be faithful. Be responsible with all the power and all the benefits and all the responsibilities that are given to you. And that's what God sees. That's what God is evaluating to promote you. Because the Bible says these words, be faithful in the little and I will put you in the much. We don't put ourselves. No, God places us. And one of the greatest examples of this is David, when he was just a shepherd boy, he was faithful and God just kept promoting him and promoting him and promoting him. Although he had many adversaries and many, many forces against him, the, the forces of evil that will want to come against you cannot, cannot take you off God's plan and purpose when you are faithful. So make sure you're faithful. Be ambitious, but not at the cost of being faithful. We need to have a little ambition in our lives. You know, we need to be tenacious. But most important, make sure you're being faithful. Make sure you're, you're dotting your I's and you're crossing your T's with all of the yes sir people in your life. The yes ma'am people in your life. Those people that God has placed in your life. Amen. And so acknowledge them. This man acknowledged Jesus' authority. And he defined authority. He goes... I'm a man under authority. I have authority and I'm under authority. And so, because authority is not something you take, it's something that's given to you. And most of all, authority, the, the, the most important part of authority is the responsibility of authority. And so we need to be faithful and responsible. And so, uh, where do you have authority at? In the areas where you're responsible. Be a responsible husband. Be a responsible father. Be a responsible CEO, be a responsible owner of a company, be a responsible lead person, be a responsible son. Wherever your responsibilities are, no matter how little they may be or insignificant they will be, God is watching you because if you can show faithfulness with things that are insignificant, then God can entrust you things that are very important. If you can be responsible with things that are that are that are that are not true riches, the Bible says. The Bible says God can entrust you with true riches. And so responsibility is the key, is the foundational for us men growing in our authority and growing healthy and growing in a way. And the way and the, and the growth is this, is that you see that God's hand is on you, that God's a supporter on you. For example, as a pastor and as a, as a you know, the, the head of the household of family. That's one of the things I want. I said, Lord, I, I want your hand on my life. I don't always uh, get it right. You know, I don't always make the right decision. There's a lot of things I look back and I'm like, man, I shouldn't have done that or I should have done this. And, uh, you know, you can't cry or spill milk, but I learned from life. But, you know, I, I want to be a blessing. I want to be a blessing. And sometimes there's tough decisions to make. And I can't delegate that responsibility. It's mine. And so, in those moments, we need to have the authority of God in our lives. Authority is important. And so, yes, sir, that's very important. Who are the yes, sirs? Who are the yes, ma'ams in your life? And make sure that you're you're uh, giving them their respect. You're giving them their honor. The Bible says, give, give honor to whom honor is due. Give respect to whom respect is due. And so, as you walk in this humility, because the Bible says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And he will exalt you in due season. You see, there's a due season. We don't, we don't manage that. We don't manage the season. We don't manage, we don't accelerate time. We, our job is not to manage time. Our job is to manage our hearts in the areas where God has placed me and to be faithful. And it's when God's going to promote me, that's up to God. And even if time goes by, you keep being faithful. Sometimes God will keep you in a place for a while. 
longer than what maybe you feel is needed because he's going to take you to a very high place. In every high place, there's more to win, but there's also more to lose. And so believe that God has prepared you. Today, I want to encourage you to do that examination. Evaluate your life. Ask yourself. Look, when you think about your authority, look through it. Look at it through the lens of responsibility. That will teach you to be a great governor. Learn how to govern. And I believe that God will bless you. So today I want to pray for you. Father, I pray that each and every man that is watching, that we would all grow in our in the authority that you give us, that we would all develop with true authority of God because it's needed. We want to be good leaders. We want to be great leaders uh, because of to our loved ones and to our friends and to those who, who are dependent on us in some way. We want to be those great, those great leaders and that you be glorified, Lord. And Lord, today we ask for forgiveness. Forgive us, Lord, for getting away from our responsibility, letting ambitious, personal ambition to hijack our convictions. And we have, we have failed. So we repent today and we acknowledge the people of authority in our lives. And we acknowledge that they are in our lives and we're going to give them the respect that they are due, the honor that they are due, the obedience that they are due. And we ask you this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, I pray that you were encouraged. I pray that you were blessed. Uh, we're going to be here every week. Don't forget to give us a comment, give us a like, and don't forget to share the video. I believe that God will bless you. And I bless everybody that's on here. Uh, everybody, there's some people on here. Uh, Maria Ramirez, God bless you. Matter of fact, we were we were mentioning you today in a good way. We were just uh, talking about how uh, it's a joy to see you just going out there doing doing Maria. Uh, God bless you, Mija. Uh, Justin, God bless you. Billy, God bless you. Uh, Andres, again, God bless you. Uh, my friend Brett, my brother, my bro. Uh, 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 God bless you, uh, Adelpha. God bless you, uh, Israel. God bless you. Uh, so glad you guys are connected. I'm glad to hear you. See that you're here. I'm wishing you the best. Uh, in Jesus' name, Amen. See you next time. Bye bye.